Thank you very much. So stand up here. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you uh, so much for being here and for giving me um, a slice of your time this morning. Certainly appreciate that. Um, my name is Les or Leslie. Either one is totally fine. I just go by Les because it's easier for the website name, to be honest. <laughs> um, but uh, and I am a, a professional photographer here in Pensacola. Um, this is actually my hometown. This is where I was born, and uh, I moved around a lot as a, as a kid, but um, went to high school here. And that's actually where my journey in photography began, was over at Pensacola High. Um, they had a, a good, I don't know if they still have it or not, but they did at the time a, a good photography program, and I learned to shoot on film, develop film and all of that. And over the years, that interest has grown into uh, the, the business that I'm now attempting to run. Um, so uh, I'll start off giving you a little bit of my background as a photographer, my experience up to this point. Um, I've done travel photography assignments for companies such as Gaijin Pot and Japan Travel. My family lived in Japan for a number of years. We actually just got back last year from Japan, so um, I've, I've done a number of my, my jobs over there. That's really where my career uh, began, so to speak. I've also done commercial architectural projects for uh, companies like the Tokyo Hotels, which is also in Japan, also the Hampton Inn here in the U.S., and a couple of other private venues that I've done as well. Um, my work has been featured in publications like National Geographic Traveler, uh, Florida Trend Magazine, and also locally in the Pensacola City Guide, which of course being uh, a, a native of Pensacola is one I'm especially proud of. And then I'm uh, currently a photographer as part of the uh, stock photography co-op called Stocksy United. So that's some of my background, my experience, but what I really want to talk to you about today is not my experience, but my vision as a photographer, what I bring into this field uh, uniquely and uh, how I've been using that in my business, and I look forward to hearing some of your feedback. So, as a photographer, my specialties really uh, revolve around the three um, categories you see up there at the top under the, the name, landscape, travel, and architectural photography. And for simplicity's sake, I like to uh, narrow this down to two categories, places and spaces. And so I think of it that way. I, I shoot places and I shoot spaces. And of course, in terms of places, I'm thinking of travel destinations, um, beautiful landscapes, natural landscapes, things of that nature. And then with spaces, focus more on architecture, whether it's hospitality, real estate, whatever that might be. Um, but whether it's places or spaces, really my goal and my vision is the same. And uh, I'm going to run some images back here so you can see some of the work that I've done over the years. But my, my goal is basically the same, which is to create compelling imagery that evokes emotion in the viewer. That's ultimately what I'm trying to do, regardless of what kind of photography you're talking about. So with photography, obviously, you're, this is a, a really important thing that we're doing today. Obviously, the, the, with the, the digital world, having imagery really matters, and having compelling imagery matters a lot. And a lot of photographers today, I think, Many go out and are simply capturing the visual data of the scene, just factually what it looks like. And another kind of adage that tends to show up in photography is uh, they, that people want to tell a story. Photographers are aiming to tell a story. And that's certainly appropriate in certain situations. But for me personally, um, I'm not interested in only collecting the visual data that exists at that particular location nor am I generally trying to tell a story. There's cases where I am, but most of the time it's just not relevant to the kind of work that I do. So rather, again, I want to create compelling imagery that evokes emotions, and the goal of that ultimately is to help the viewer build a connection with whatever that location is. If it's a space or if it's a place, by evoking those emotions, they build a connection immediately. And what that does is it creates a, a desire connected to that location. So for example, if it's an uh, amazing travel destination, for example, then they see that and they think, I want to go see that for myself. I want to go there for myself. Or if it's um, some natural landscape, maybe it'll encourage them to get outdoors. Or honestly, I've actually had um, a counselor who said he used my work to help his clients, who they see that work and whenever they're feeling stressed or anxious, it can help calm them down. So that's a good thing to me too. If I can evoke those kind of emotions of the peace and the serenity of the scene, that is fantastic. And of course, when you're talking about uh, spaces, uh, hospitality or things of that nature, I want the viewer to see that and think, I want to spend a week in there. Or maybe if it's real estate, to say, well, I'm in the market for a house and this one really looks nice. I can envision my family, my life existing in, in that space. So that's the reason that I'm trying to create that, that kind of imagery. 
And uh, that's what I bring as a photographer. My skill with the camera, my skill in processing, and my experience all goes into the images that I create. Now, of course, being a skilled photographer and being a skilled businessman are two very different things. And, and so those are um, the, the distinctions that I'm, I'm working with, obviously, and trying to learn the business side of this and grow in that. So up to this point, as, as a photographer, the things that I've been focusing on in my business I focus really up to this point, especially in the landscape and travel uh, area, has been the, the part that I've done the most in. So I've done, again, professional projects for companies going around. For example, in Japan, I did a project for um, Aomori Prefecture. Aomori is the, the northernmost prefecture on the main island of Japan. And so I went up there and I took pictures all around the prefecture so that the prefectural uh, tourism board could create a website to encourage tourists to come to their area because it's not a place a lot of people go. Most people go to like Tokyo or Kyoto or something like that and they pretty much don't go anywhere else unfortunately because there's a lot of amazing stuff there so they're trying to encourage people to come and that's one of the projects that I did. Um, but aside from that I also do workshops leading people and uh, to different locations especially for example in Japan so they may find you know there's some secret places that I know because I've lived there that a lot of other people don't so I can take them those places teach them how to take photographs and what have you. Um, so that's been that really side of the business. And over the last year, I've been trying to build the more architectural side since we came back to the States. And uh, I've had a few jobs and, and uh, shot again for the Hampton Inn, for example. There's some private things that I've shot, a, a lodge that I shot for up in New Hampshire, for example. But the challenges for me in this is really creating sustainable income, right? It's one thing to have jobs here and there that you get, that's great. But having sustainable income with which I can support my family, that's another matter entirely. And so that's honestly one of the biggest challenges for me. Part of that comes into what Bob was talking about is networking. Networking is really important. That's part of the reason we came back to Pensacola because this is my hometown. I have a lot of, of leads already here in a way. But to be honest, I'm not a super outgoing person. That's part of why I'm a photographer. I kind of like to be by myself doing my work. And uh, I have no problem speaking in a situation like this or even leading workshops because in those situations, my role is defined and it's easy for me to know, okay, here's what I need to do. But when it comes into like a group setting like this and I don't know anybody and I don't have a defined role, while I have a defined role up here speaking, good. <laughs> when I don't have the defined role, then I have no idea what to do. And so that's a challenge for me is networking, getting to know people. And uh, then also, obviously, just getting your foot in the door. Because even when somebody sees your work and says, that's amazing work, it's another thing to convince them that, OK, you're worth hiring. I want to hire you. I want to try this, this relationship and see if you can do work for me that's going to benefit my business and all of that. So those are the big challenges that I'm running with, is trying to get the connections, get my foot in the, the door, and then creating a sustainable living from that. So um, that's basically my business in a nutshell and the challenges I'm facing and I certainly look forward to uh, dialoguing with you guys and, and hearing your feedback. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Like, I'd like to open the floor for questions for Les. Do you have a question? Yes. So I have a few. Um, the first is, so is your goal to work privately or to continue with the Yeah, for me, really, it's a, uh, a mixture. Um, that's kind of what I've found up to this point, is that for a lot of photographers, to create a sustainable living, um, OK, so that to create a sustainable living, they really have to do a lot of different things. And so uh, right now, I'm kind of just testing the waters to see what works the best, to be honest with you. And I'm open to whatever happens. Um, if it was just me personally, I think that um, Again, because the defined role is a little bit easier for my, the way my mind works, I think working for companies or tourism boards or something of that nature would be more preferable because then it's sort of just clear cut of what I need to do. Uh, but I'm open to however the future goes. Yeah, absolutely. I have, um, I'm, I'm involved in really the biggest ones for me up to this point have been uh, Facebook and Instagram, obviously, and those are major platforms, of course. 
but I have a presence on a lot of the big platforms. Um, uh, Twitter, I'm, I'm there, and, um, and also uh, Flickr. I've, I've been on there for actually a long time. And so, but my biggest followings are really on Facebook and Instagram. That's where I, I, I do the most. And yeah, I definitely do a lot of marketing out there. I found quite a, a number of clients, especially for my workshops and, and such in, uh, in those areas. So uh, yeah, I definitely do, but it's also something I'm wanting to grow for sure. I've, I've got a good start on it, but really to be able to, to do some of the work I'm trying to do, you have to get up to the larger numbers and that's, that's definitely a challenge. So is your goal to stay local, to grow, to be reaching most of the South or just Florida nationally, or are you willing and open to going globally? Again? Yeah, so for, um, for like the workshops and, and such, I, I do that pretty much anywhere. I, I especially, obviously, because of my affinity for Japan, I'm, I've actually got some workshops planned there for next year. Um, so that's something that I, I'm, I'm hoping will be successful in part just because I love going there and I love introducing people to the area. So that's something I like to do. But as far as the more commercial work, I'm totally fine going elsewhere as well, certainly. But my focus right now has been more certainly within the U.S. And now that we're down here, I've been trying to do a little bit more locally and make connections there because um, obviously I think being involved in your local community is good. and. and it, when you get to other places, you don't really get to build lasting relationships quite in the same way as you do in the place where you live. And obviously my family's here. It's really important to me to be able to be around my family, not be gone constantly. Um, so I've got three kids, so I, I want to be there you know, with them as they're growing up. Um, so being local would be obviously a benefit in that way. Yeah. Other questions? Yes, Ken. Yeah, so um, as, as was mentioned before, I've, there's, I just got here back in July, August. We came back down here. So I've got some plans over the next year that are involving some of those things that I haven't done quite yet. But for example, prints, yeah, I do sell prints. Um, I actually just recently made, there was one of the images up there, the one of the, uh, the beach here, actually. It was taken over on the Gulf Islands National Seashore. And that one I made, it was a massive, it was the largest print I've ever made. I think it was like six foot long or something. It was quite a large print. Um, so I do make prints for people, and uh, I'm hoping over the next year to get involved in some things. In fact, I, I know locally there's the, uh, the um, gallery nights here in Pensacola, and I, I would like to do some of that as well. Um, but uh, as far as, what was the other part of your question? Travel. Travel. Yes, yeah. It depends just on the project that I'm doing. Um, for for the, the landscape, stuff that I do on my own, just for my own portfolio, or for example, for doing workshops, then typically I pay for that myself because I'm just trying to basically build, for example, we're talking about on social media, getting images out there and people saying, oh, I really would like this guy to guide me to that place and show me how to take these kinds of images. So for that kind of stuff, I pay for myself. But when I'm doing assignments, then typically that's just included in the cost of, of the assignment and whoever it's for is you know, paying for the travel and uh, what have you, so. Yes, sir. Yeah, so as far as businesses that are frequently using that kind of work, as far as landscape and travel photography, typically it is going to be, on a regular basis, it's going to be magazines. Um, outside of that, there is, I also, as I mentioned, I do stock photography. And so that's also where I make a good portion of my income as well from there. And I don't, honestly, with stock photography, I have no idea who uses it. I'm not actually allowed to know who uses it. So, I mean, I can know, I can know if I find them randomly on the internet, but I can't, they, they don't tell me who it is that's purchasing, you know, a license or what have you. So I don't always know who it is, but obviously there are companies out there that are using all kinds of pictures, including landscape and travel. So I do make uh, uh, submissions to publications, you know, various magazines. In some cases, they come to me. That's actually what happened with the National Geographic when I, they, I remember got that email, I was like, this is a, a spam or you know, scam or something like that, right? It's not legitimate, but it was. So um, you know, that does happen occasionally. So that's the big one on that. On the architectural side, of course, then there's always companies who are looking for somebody to shoot their property or 
you know, the, their new hotel or whatever. So that's a little bit easier. And that's one of the reasons I'm trying to build that side of the business because it's a bit more sustainable compared to the other side of things. But yeah. Uh, secondly, um, you said you touched on your workshops. Are those workshops where you actually have the last class to physically go somewhere and teach five people? Or is it something I've seen some people do the photography, they handle classes like online. People can sign up and hey, you want to hire me to come out and teach you? Yeah, so the digital workshops, I've done some of that, but um, it's something that I've kind of set by the wayside for now. I've done it in the past, but just that's really one of those things where you need a much greater following for it to be worth the time that you invest into creating the content. Because obviously, creating high quality digital content takes a lot of time to prepare it all and have everything well. So before I'm going to do that again, I want to make sure I have the following that I know the, in the time invested is you know, worth it. But as far as the other workshops, yeah, typically it's going somewhere physically and being there. I did one this fall up in New Hampshire, and I've got some more planned for next year like that. And, and honestly, those are the ones that I love the most because you really get to take people out into the location and show them that. But um, I'm open to, to different things there as well. Sure. And you mentioned that you did the city one. Is there uh, like a group who does all the city ones that you can link up with? Or do they have a convention that all the cities go to that you can say, hey, I've been You're talking about where I created the, where, well, I didn't actually create the website, but where I created the images for the website you're talking about? Yeah, that's, that's something I'm interested in doing, and it's just, a, again, a matter of networking and finding those connections. I've actually been talking to a, a local um, marketer, her name is uh, Hannah, and um, I just blanked out on her last name. I hadn't seen her in a little while here, but we've been talking some over the last couple of months. And Becker, that's it, Hannah Becker. I think she's been here before. She mentioned One Million Cups. But anyway, she, um, she and I have been talking about trying to work together because she is a marketer and that's her job and she really does really well about those websites and getting those kind of connections. But I'm more on the creative side. So we've been talking about building a partnership specifically for things of that nature where they, the you know, city or the town, whatever, that's looking to do it kind of gets the whole package all at once um, through one, you know, one group. So. Anyway, yeah, if I can find the networks so that to do that, I'm definitely interested. Not so much a question, but more a suggestion. Um, photography's been around, I guess, so far. Yeah, everyone was around. And uh, I've had to make the same change. I'm in the publishing industry, which has been around since Gutenberg. And Amazon changed everything. So I had to move my company to a boutique. Something special that wasn't available by all the other people. I mean, now with clip art, and everyone's photographer. I go back to the brown one that my father had one. Now everyone has, you know, a high pixel count, getting better, you can do your own editing. So there's so many more of, of, of ways of having pictures done. You know, so I don't know what the answer is, but you're going to have to become a boutique provider of some sort. Something that isn't available in clip art, something that isn't available by my iPhone, something that isn't available, you know, to other people, whether it be portraits or maybe, uh, uh, Art of photography is so beautiful. In my house, I have you know 20 or 30 photos that I've taken around the world that I've turned into art, mm -hmm. and that can't be done through clip art. But so whatever it is, when you're in a pedestrian business for a small provider, you have to have something that's unusual and special that isn't offered in low-cost, high-volume ways. Yeah. Right, what he's saying is, if you have a company that's supposedly a commodity, if exactly. you need a lightning rod or an exclusive. Something special. Something special. Uh, I have a question. Uh, recurring revenue, mailbox money, I call it. Have you had any flashes on how to, to generate that? Because if you're if you're ill, your business stops pretty much. Yeah. Well, and that's where the um, the, the stock photography you know comes in. Certainly, in a lot of cases is having that sort of a. a tends to be recurring. Now, it's not a guaranteed every month, and that's one of the challenges. That's also one of the things that I was talking, incidentally, to Hannah about, because that's one of the things that she specializes in with, with her marketing company is creating long-term relationships with these people so that they have a continual need for that instead of just, oh, only you know once in a while. And so that's uh, definitely 
a concern. Do I have a great model for that right now? No, but I'm working on it. So. Excellent. Any other questions? Yeah, I'd like to. You know, what we're going to do now is uh, ask how the audience can help you. And I'm going to make a suggestion. Okay, I've looked, I don't know if you've looked at some of these photography, it's extraordinary. The next partner of mine, retired Marine, is a photographer. And I'm sure that uh, Les does the same thing. My, my uh, Marine friend was a sniper. So that he became a photographer. He would go and sit in for six hours to take one photograph. But when you got the picture, it was so extraordinary. And I looked at some of your photography, and it's extraordinary. So I assume you must be doing some of the same thing. Is that have you ever considered approaching uh, the uh, Hallmark type companies that do cards? Mm -hmm. And uh, just get to put you on a retainer every month, you can send them 10 photographs. But some of the stuff I see, I see your stuff on the front of Hallmark cards. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Definitely. That's, and, and that's something I'm looking for over the next year, certainly, is the people that I can reach out to directly uh, like that. So, yeah, that's a, a great idea. And secondarily, most of the money in the panhandle is down in the Destin. Sandusk in 30 a all right? There's some here in Pensacola, but most of it's that way. So it, it's uh, Peter Bose owns most of Destin, right? So uh, he's very accessible. Have you ever been to Destin yet? I'm not guessing. Mm -hmm. you, go over you go over the bridge, there's a giant emerald, whatever hotel. He's in there. You go meet the general manager. Uh, they refresh pictures every year of all their holdings up and down okay. the coast. So just a thought. How, how can you help Mr. Taylor? <laughs> well, your ideas have been helpful, and I appreciate it, certainly. Um, and actually, we were talking about the, the brownie that's kind of interesting, because I was just reading an article about that, and, and you're right, the times change. And uh, so, honestly, for me, the biggest thing is, is uh, as I said, networking, any, any connections that are you know, relevant, somebody that I can, can serve in some way through my work. I mean, that's my goal, ultimately, is if I'm doing the work, Obviously, I need to consider money, but I want to actually be doing something that's serving the person, not just wasting their time or taking money for something they don't really need. I want it to actually benefit them. So if there's somebody out there that my services can actually be useful for them and, and help them in some way, um, whether that's for the city or that's for a private company or something like that, I would love to connect with those people. So any, any connections you might have that would be relevant, I'd appreciate. Um, I just had a suggestion. Have you ever thought of taking like a really great photo of a let's say a business, and then blowing it up and maybe donating to them and putting in their business to kind of get your name out? Because most people, if you're sitting in a waiting room, you'll stare at something and you'll read who it's by. Yeah, well, th there's something kind of similar to that that I've been thinking about doing, again, you know, as the next year that go goes into, uh, or as we go into the next year. Um, what some photographers will do is they'll donate images that they have to a, a business like maybe a restaurant that's relevant, for example. Obviously, I've got a ton of images from Japan. So sometimes they'll, they'll do is they'll say, well, I'll basically loan you my images. You can hang them up. And then if somebody wants to buy them, then they can buy them there. And otherwise, they just hang up and make your restaurant look nicer, right? So that's something that I've considered doing um, as well, for, for sure. I actually met a guy recently who he has a sort of interesting model. And this is sort of going back to the recurring uh, money thing. He actually leases out his images to businesses, to like, for example, hotels or even offices who want that kind of nice work in, in their business just to help give the atmosphere, make the atmosphere a little bit nicer. So he leases them out over five, 10 years, and then he just gets a monthly check from those businesses for keeping his images up. But then he also refreshes those images on you know, however often. And so they're paying him to keep the images in there, but they're also getting fresh images and high quality work. So that's an interesting idea that I'm looking into. One last question. I love that idea. I think you should try to figure out something to run with that. Are you really real estate companies around here? They're I've local. Yeah, I've just started that actually. I've done a couple of house I mean right now the sort of the down season. Obviously this isn't really the busiest time for that, but I have made some connections. I've talked to maybe four or five real estate agents, so I'm hoping that over the next year I'll be able to do some some more of that as well. I did actually. I so um, I my my local church. They, they we sent some people over there and were helping out right after. So I, I did go over there and take some images. Of course, it was all just you know destruction. So, <laughs> but uh, I actually there was a, a publication that used a couple of them. Um, so, yeah, there was. It was it was bad.
But I'm going to ask, oh, go ahead. Do you have any metrics or data that shows, hey, I see this beautiful photo in a magazine, website, et cetera. It draws me in more so that you can use that as part of your sales. So, yeah, as far as the travel industry goes, I don't know about the metrics there as much. I just, I'm not sure what's there. I haven't seen anything, but there might be something I just haven't accessed yet. Typically that shows up more in like real estate